in um, in lockdown, I became really interested in, in particular, it seemed like women thinkers who were articulating the situation of lockdown in, in a very particular way, which is to say that this revealing of the mechanisms of capitalism um, leaves a, a kind of space open for imagining how else we might live or how we might think about the ways we proceed. There's something that Isabel Stengers says that is really important um, and in relation to the animations that I've made. She talks about um, if you're sleeping, then you can be woken up. So if you're within the spell, a spell of capitalism, or within a kind of unthinking spell, you can be woken up. But if you're pretending to sleep, then you can't be woken up, because um, you're not really sleeping. I'm always drawing just to get ideas out and I don't really know what I'm going to draw before I start drawing. I just draw whatever comes to mind. And usually if there's a figure, it's an idea of myself seen from the inside rather than the outside. So it's like a way of exploring me thinking around a number of subjects. And a lot of the time recently, it's been this kind of relationship that we have to nature or to a kind of wider energy that's in the universe, us being a part of the universe. So the animations are made by using drawings that I've already made previously. I don't, I don't make drawings especially for the animations because I think they might seem to serve the animation. I really like the directness of drawing, the way that you can immediately see something that's in the mind's eye. Both my sons are art students now, so there were three of us in the first lockdown, all together in the same house, thinking about art and <laughs> thinking about making art. And that was quite interesting. And asking, you know, what can art be when you're in this very different situation? Or what should it be? And what should it be about? And what should it do? And how does it function? And how does it meet an audience? which is why, you know, animation became so interesting to me because a lot of my shows were postponed or closed. And then there was a space for, you know, work to be online. And, you know, the, this kind of digital space, it just felt like the animations met the conditions of lockdown um, very neatly even though it was something that I'd wanted to do for quite a long time. I'd never had time to really sit down and teach myself to do it. Was there a particular moment where you felt this sense of um, actualization, where everything kind of like came together, that then something, the synthesis is born and that something does emerge that then becomes Emma Talbot and, 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 and you then own that that's your signature. But it's the thing that's always been Emma Talbot, that you maybe were sort of somehow suppressing it in wanting to mould it into something beyond Emma Talbot. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Like, you know, mm. you can only be yourself and just accepting accepting you are who you are and, you know, then, then something comes of that because it's, I think it's honest, you know. And I think, you know, the thing that we're talking about now, 
while you were talking, I was thinking that there is a parallel with, you know, the time that we're living in is like, you know, the packing up boxes in a studio time, isn't it? It's like things seem quite bleak at the moment and and then you're sort of holding on to a, a sense of a kind of truth that you you might feel could propel you into a better future space you know i think that is the ethos of the project that i put together for circa that kind of you know from the sort of lowest point you actually can build something that just feels really um authentic if that if that makes any sense Thank you.